I am a woman. And so these tips are for women making friends with other women. If you want to know how a woman should make friends with a man, why is it important to even have friends? And then once we realize why it's important to have friends, how do we make friends and how do we keep them? The lead researcher of the Grant study at Harvard stated that the only thing that really matters in life is your relationship to other people. The book Social, Why Our Brains Are Wired to Connect cites a study that asked adults over the last six months, who are the people that you have discussed matters most important to you? When this survey was done in 2004, as much as 25% of the people surveyed said they had zero friends. That sounds so sad that one out of every four people doesn't have a friend. Love you, friend. The book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, states that the number four regret of people on their deathbeds was that they wish they had stayed in touch with friends. If having regrets on your deathbed isn't enough motivation to make some friends and keep them, this next factoid will. A mega analysis of social support and health outcomes states that not having enough friends or having a weak social circle is the same risk factor as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Now, if you're a smoker and you don't have any friends, Ooh. I'm gonna give you one more reason why it is so important to have friends and good friends. The book, The 100 Simple Secrets of Happy People, states that contrary to popular belief that happiness is hard to explain or is linked to having great wealth, researchers have actually linked the core factors in having a happy life. Your number of friends, your closeness of friends, your closeness of family, and your closeness of coworkers and neighbors make up 70% of your happiness. Uh, I guess I should probably bring my neighbor cookies. The reason we need friendships is because we need something to bond over. We need to be able to talk about our lives in a non-judgmental With someone atmosphere. who completely understands because they're in the same situation. Yes, we can commiserate together. Yeah. I clean up poop all day long. I know you do too. Let's talk about it. <laughs> there you go. As a teenager or even a child, it's easy to make friends. You go to school, you go to sports, you go to clubs. And that's where you meet your friends. As an adult, if you do not go to school and if you don't go to work, how do you make friends? Number one, you join a group. Because then you can kind of scout out a bunch of different personalities and see who you click with the best. So they actually did a study and they checked in 91 countries and the country with the happiest people uh, was Denmark. Really? And nine, they found that 93% of the people in Denmark are part of a group, some kind of social activity. And Switzerland was number two, and they also had a really high percentage of people that were involved in groups. What number is the United States? I have no idea, probably pretty low. When you first join a group, it can be so hard to try to go out, hey, let's be friends. Number two, you invite to a small get together. Whether that is a lunch date, a play date, going for a walk, going to do something. You just go to do something that involves another person also, so it takes off the pressure. Couples so with night. our girls' night, it usually has two groups of people. There's the whole group that comes at eight o'clock, and then usually about half of the people leave about 10 o'clock, and then there's a second group that stays until about one or two. It's not the same people every week. It depends on who feels the need to talk about things that they don't feel comfortable talking about in a big group setting. Number three, you listen and you seek out similarities. It's like an interview, honestly. It's an interview where you're interviewing them. So you're asking them questions and you have to actively listen to what they're saying to find out if you do have things in common. And when you hear something in common, talk about it. What is the difference between listening and active listening? When you're listening, you may be looking at the person, they're talking, you may be nodding, but inside your mind, you're thinking about what you're gonna say next. During active listening, while the other person is talking, any thoughts that come into your mind of what you want to say to the other person, you need to stop them. You need to consciously focus on what they're saying, what you find interesting, and what you want to ask them about what they just told you. We all face challenges and we all like to talk about them. So when you're active listening, ask the other person about challenges that they have. What are challenges that they face with kids of this age? What are challenges that they face being a woman? I don't know. What are challenges? Everybody has challenges. Just think of a challenge that you figure they have and ask them about it and see if it's something you have in common. Number four, be vulnerable 
and likable. It actually makes it more comfortable when people are that way. Being vulnerable is pretty simple. You just express something or share something with that person that not everybody knows about you and it helps them to feel comfortable sharing something with you about them. You're not necessarily airing your dirty laundry. Tell what your insecurities are. Turns out a lot of people are insecure. I know that women in general want to appear perfect and that's a really big issue right now in our culture I feel like is that women you feel the pressure that you have to appear perfect otherwise people won't like you or they'll look yeah. down upon you right whereas I'm like I know that I am so imperfect and maybe if I let other people who appear perfect know that I'm imperfect maybe they'll let me see that they're imperfect and so in turn it will actually make me feel better about myself then I feel like you're more confident because I feel like I can be myself with confidence. I know that you've already seen my worst or know my worst. I know yeah. your worst. I don't have to fake anything. There's no false pretenses. Like we can just be who we are and then I feel more confident in the actual me. Now how do you be likable? To be authentic. That's like the theme this year. That's, the That's my theme this year. Ugh, it's such a stupid thing. Why is it stupid? No, I'm totally kidding. I think it's great. She's alive. As an extrovert, as someone that likes to get out and talk to people and get out there. Listen to me! <laughs> we are going to be friends! <laughs> hey everyone, let's be friends! That was creepy though, because I did the slow smile, it was too slow. It's kind of like... Do you want to be... Where do you want to go to have ice cream? My friendship. <laughs> Today I'm going to share with you a few tricks that you can use with your body language to show that you are open, you're inviting, and that you're a genuine person. So this week, when you're talking to a stranger or someone that you don't know very well, I want you to use these tricks and try to see how they respond to you and if that's different than how they would normally respond to you. Before you even talk to a potential friend, the most important is to smile. In the book, Smile, The Astonishing Powers of a Simple Act, which is a TED book, they actually talk about a study done by a bunch of neuroscientists and what they found is that a smile, depending on who you're receiving the smile from, can bring as much joy as $25,000 or 2,000 bars of chocolate. Some creepy dude smiles at you? No, that's not the same. I know that my face is naturally not a warm and inviting face. Nobody wants to be friends with that. No. I try to use two of the body language tips to be likable. I raise my eyebrows and I smile a lot. That's why I already have wrinkles in my forehead. I train myself to leave, raise my eyebrows. <laughs> Lower the chin and raise the eyebrows. Oh my gosh. Hey. What are friends? <laughs> Anything that scrunches the face, no, that's not good. Anything that you open, you're smiling, lower the chin, tilt the head. Body is angled, not directly, a little bit away, but the face and the feet are going directly to the person that you're talking to. Hey, let's be friends. I promise I won't be a bully. By raising your eyebrows, smiling, tilting your head down, leaning forward them, angling your body towards them, you are showing that person that you care about what they say and you want to be their friend and you promise that you won't be a bully and you will be a good friend. Number five, make time for relationships. We only have 24 hours in the day. With such busy schedules, it is so easy to go throughout the entire day without taking the time to work on our relationships. The New York Times wrote an article that said that in order to be considered close friends, two people need to stay in contact at least once every two weeks. If you can text or call or see in person, then you're still a close friend. In the book Friendfluence, the surprising ways friends make us who we are, they say that the most common friendship fights boil down to time management. If one friend feels like they're doing all the calling or the texting or the inviting, they can feel like maybe the other person isn't as devoted to the relationship as they are. You are always giving up something in order to get something else. If you want to exercise and you wake up at 4 a.m. to exercise before your day, you're giving up sleep. So you're gonna be more tired, but you're also gonna be more fit. There's always a give and take. As a busy mom, sometimes it's hard to find that time that I can devote to my friends. Once a week, I give up a little bit of sleep five hours after my kids are in bed, that one night a week, so that I can maintain that relationship that I have with those friends. And for me, that's worth it. Another way that I stay caught up with friends, I live quite a bit out of town, and so I do a lot of driving. Instead of listening to music, that's when I do my phone calls. This is what my husband told me in dating. So like if a girl turned him down and just turned him down, then he was like, okay, I will never go back. Like and ask her again. 
But if they turn him down and say, but I would love to next week or... Well, because that's still it. reciprocating. Right, because it's letting him know, I'm not just not interested. I truly can't come, but I would love to another time. No, I'm interested. I want to be your friend. I need them. <laughs> so don't, don't give up on me. I'll be back next week. Invite me again. To recap my five ways to quickly make friends as an adult. Number one, join a group. Number two, invite people to a smaller get together. Number three, listen and seek out similarities. Number four, be vulnerable and likable. And number five, make time for that relationship. I wanna know your secrets for making friends as an adult and keeping them. Please share down in the comment section whether you thought this was good advice or not. Also, if you try it and it works, please let me know. See ya. Do you want to just nurse on camera? <laughs> Please. I'm pro breastfeeding in public, just not pro nudity in public. <laughs> oh, for the love of all, I'm sorry, it's my laugh. I know it scares my face. When I was 13, my parents got me a video camera, and I used to make home videos when I would come home from school and pretend that I had my own talk show, and then I would pretend I was the person interviewing and also the person being interviewed, and so I would have, you know, I'd have different action, accents. My favorite one was, hey, I'm a Scottish nun. I don't know why I wanted to be a Scottish nun, but I did. And another one was an elf. I would just pull my ears up. I would do this. Also, if you like my lashes, they're magnetic and they're going to be a part of my new line that I'm going to be coming out with. And if you are a man trying to make another man's friend, you need to talk to a man. I don't know that either.